Hello and welcome to another Somerville Media Center business update. Uh, I'm happy to be joined uh, with Jennifer Atwood, who is the executive director of East Somerville Main Streets. Hello to you, Jen. Hi, thank you for having me. And also joined with us today is Christina Chiampa, who is the founder and owner of All She Wrote Books. Uh, how are you doing, Christina? Good, how are you? I'm, I'm doing all right. That's good. Like we were talking about before we uh, before we came on, the weather is great, and we're looking forward to a lot of, of more days like that. Um, so, Christina, um, you you are all set to open up a pop up store in Assembly Row. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, but it should have been open by now. Yes, according yeah. to the COVID timeline. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So COVID bumped everybody's timeline. Um, talk to us about talk to us about that and also uh, what you're doing um, as far as uh, a reopening plan. You know, we just heard this week um, the governor's plan. We also heard the mayor's reaction to the governor's plan. And it seems like Somerville is going to get a much tempered rollout um, and a much more careful rollout, uh, some would say, than the state. Um, so why don't you why don't you talk to us about that as someone who's opening a pop up space? Yeah, absolutely. So um, pre COVID, uh, the original plan was to have a soft opening on April twenty fifth, which happens to be Independent Bookstore Day. Uh, that has also been postponed as well uh, due to COVID, and the now next date for that is actually in August. Um, and then thereafter, uh, our grand opening would have been on Friday, May 1st. Um, so when COVID happened, we pretty much ceased any, you know, construction or any kind of, um, updates that we were going to make to the space. Um, as soon as non-essential businesses were told to not operate within their, uh, spaces. So we abided by what the governor and what our mayor, um, you know, Put out there, and so we pretty much pivoted very quickly. Went to really focusing on online sales. So we ship uh, through UPS as well as US Postal Service pretty much seven days a week. Um, and uh, we also, at the time, were offering free porch delivery, but we did cease that because in the beginning we just weren't sure if it was really safe to do that. Um, but with that being said, and with now the new kind of reopening plan from the governor, but then also the um, our mayor's kind of thoughts around that reopening plan and the fact that Somerville is going to be taking a very much more slower approach to it is kind of a similar model that we're doing as well. Um, so I have been really actually for the last several weeks leading up to the 18th have really been thinking about what that world would look like in the bookstore, what that, what browsing would look like. Um, because it, it is going to be totally different, mm. um, than what we were originally planned for. The original space was supposed to be half bookstore slash gift shop, half community space where we would actually would have held like workshops and author readings and live events uh, for the community. Um, that was the original intent and kind of how the space was going to look. Um, so now what we're sh thinking about shifting it to is really almost like a supermarket, different aisles, how we are going to display the books in a way that potentially could allow for some browsing, but not being able to touch them. Um, and that's a really tricky thing because uh, in the book selling world, there isn't um, an official way of decontaminating books <laughs> um, unless you, and if you try to lice all them or actually add any type of chemical to them, it could actually either warp the pages or actually ruin your binding and pages actually start falling out. That's actually a proven fact. So it's it's a really interesting kind of situation with that because we can't necessarily like quarantine books, if you will. So it's figuring out how to kind of bring back browsing in a very safe way, but also um, thinking about how do we do contactless pickup. So we've had the opportunity through the East Somerville Main Streets pickup market to really kind of 
test that out and really put some wheels into that. And so far, it's been very successful for us doing it that way and has been a really safe approach. So what I would be looking to do is incorporate that hopefully within the space as well. Um, but overall, and where we're coming at it from is I want to review everything as humanly possible. Plus, I want to keep everyone safe, um, whether they're browsing, whether they're just coming to pick it up from a from a contactless delivery perspective, or if we're going to maybe use, we have some beautiful big windows as part of the space. So we're thinking about, okay, how can we make displays kind of a way for the customer to be outside, be able to review, you know, whether it's New York Times bestsellers or queer authors, Pride Month is coming up. It's a big time of year to really talk about different types of books that are out there that talk about pride and really celebrate Pride Month. Um, and so how does that display look and how do we make the customer experience still just as special as we would if we were to have them in the store. So that's really going to be kind of the magical equation <laughs> that I need to figure out. And so that's what we're doing now is figuring out what that will look like and how we map that out uh, that aligns with both the state as well as the mayor's wishes as well for a reopening phase. Yeah. And so you're going to need it, it sounds like you're doing all the planning that you can as as a business owner at the moment. So the next the next step for you is uh, getting guidelines from from the city. I would I would guess. Yeah, that's really going to be why I'm kind of waiting and kind of seeing. I have my own ideas in my head. I've been fortunate enough to talk to other booksellers across the United States who are currently open, kind of hearing what they're doing, but also hearing you know, what maybe not to do, because some situations seem very, especially for where we live and kind of the cases and everything probably are not as safe as they could be. Maybe they work for them, but it doesn't work for us. So it's really like taking those ideas and figuring out, okay, how can we expand upon them? And then, yeah, waiting to hear what our mayor has to say. I I'm interested to see if he's maybe is going to address it in the virtual town hall this evening a little bit, or maybe not. Um, but what I'm hoping to hear is maybe some more, like a little bit more concrete details around that. So that way we can open it safely and also abide by the guidelines and the rules that the mayor is going to set for, for businesses like ours. And have you uh, benefited from, from any sort of uh, like um, payroll protection grants or, or any sort of programs like that? I know it, it's tricky because you're not traditional retail. You're, you're a hybrid. Um, what, what sort of resources are available to you uh, that you've been able to, to use? So unfortunately, the PPP is not something that we can access because I am uh, technically the sole employee um, and mathematically it didn't work. Um, so we chose not to go forward with a PPP. Uh, we were fortunate enough that we applied for the, the EIDL grant portion of the loan and were actually awarded that by the SBA at the end of April, which was great because that actually helped pay for uh, book inventory uh, that we had purchased over the month of March. March was very busy for us from an online perspective. So to be able to cover that cost without having to call the creditor and be like, hi, we need to maybe push off our terms a little bit and having those conversations that really helped avoided that. Um, I've been mostly applying for grants. I have applied for the city of Somerville um, loan program that's being offered right now. Um, I'm hoping that um, our business can be recognized for some of that money, if not all, you know, a portion of it. I know there's a lot of people, a lot of businesses in Somerville that are, um, have applied for it. So just waiting to hear on that. Um, we've also applied for some other grants as well. Uh, there is a grant that will be awarded to us this week from the American Booksellers Association's bank program. They are the insurance kind of group that helps bookstores recover from natural disasters and other types of disasterish kind of things that happen. Um, and so we've been awarded a grant. We got word about that last week. It's a small grant based on our, um, our income and stuff, but still it's better than nothing. And we're taking everything we can at this point, but at the same time, um, I've been really strategic about how do I cut down on operations costs? Where can I cut some money? 
Um, so that way I'm still, I still have a savings. I'm still able to keep the business going um, and not, uh, you know, not be able to not pay everybody. So, yeah. Yeah. And uh, Jen, Christina had mentioned the uh, the pickup market that you've been organized, uh, that you've been organizing uh, every Sunday. You just had the the second one this past Sunday. Um, can you tell us a little more about that and uh, what what your what your thoughts are and how that's going? Yeah, thank you. Um, we're really excited about it. It's a new program that, uh, like you said, we this is the second week um, and. We modeled it off a little bit off of what we think farmers markets are going to end up looking like and also um, looking at kind of how to access businesses in a safe environment, Um, knowing that there's this need, especially in East Somerville, where um, we don't have access to, we didn't have access to a farmer's market within that particular community. And a lot of people were looking for safe alternatives to going inside a grocery store. Um, and plus we were looking to other ways that we can support like startup businesses and other businesses in East Somerville that we know we're hurting right now. So, um, we gathered a group of small businesses that we knew, um, that could pivot a product right away, um, and uh, several of them are out of Foundation Kitchen, um, which is an incubator kitchen um, in East Somerville on Washington Street. And so we were partnering with them to bring several of them to this new market. And um, also Christina, she's um, an East Somerville resident, was about to open a bookstore in assembly and I knew, um, and she's been really great uh, participant on our on our promotions committee as an organization as well. And I thought she would be a perfect partner, um, non-food related business. It just made a lot of sense to include um, as well. And so we've had two so far and we're going to continue. Um, it's being held in the parking lot at Dino's Pasta, which is also a great a convenience factor because you can order your pasta and um, support other local businesses at the same time. Um, so it's Sundays between 10 a.m. and noon. Um, right now it's primarily pre-orders. So you order individually with each business and then you go on Sunday to pick up your orders um, all at once. However, we are hoping to maybe expand a day of sales in the future given um, if given the okay from health and safety. Um, obviously that's our first priority, but we're really excited. It's a very new pilot kind of program for us. And, um, it's been really, it's been really rewarding to see, uh, the reaction from the community and the neighbors, especially. That's great. And, um, so, uh, are you planning to do this every Sunday from here on out? Every Sunday for now, it's, um, confirmed every Sunday through June. Um, and we're hoping to bring in, um, new vendors, different vendors each week. Um, uh, some of, you know, returning vendors each week as well, uh, to try to mix it up a little bit. But, um, so keep, I just recommend that people go to East Central Main Street's website, um, where you can see the list of vendors and how to order from each one of them. Um, and then keep an eye out. We also can sign up for a newsletter, which will, uh, give you the update on who's participating in the market each week as well. That's great. Yeah. Um, you mentioned farmers markets. Um, I know this week the Davis Square Farmers Market is opening up. I believe their their first day is either today or tomorrow. And then we have Union Square Main Streets um, uh, opening up the farmers market on Saturday. And they're they're going to be very different. Um, they want people to practice physical distancing. People aren't going to be able to touch the food. Um, and there's a there's a whole list of rules that uh, that were put out pertaining to these farmers markets. Um, so. Yeah, I'm just mentioning that here. I know you mentioned that there's no <laughs> there's no farmers markets in East uh, in East Somerville, unfortunately. But um, yeah, as we as we talk about businesses opening up, it seems like that's the theme this week. That's all that w- that we're hearing, especially with the governor's announcement uh, and his kind of phase rollout, and then our Mayor Curtitoni's um, reaction to that and how it it's going to be uh, a more tempered thing. Jen, what are you hearing from from business owners um, about about each? So I think everyone's a little uh, confused and looking for more clarity in, of information. I know uh, when I saw uh, the announcement at eleven, um, 
on Sunday. Gosh, I don't even remember. These days are kind of blurring together. Um, and then like scanning through like the different phases, um, I was confused. And I know several businesses reached out to me to ask like, hey, can I do like in dining now, like uh, in restaurant dining now? And um, like that wasn't really spelled out. I mean, it, it's they can't um, once you kind of delve into it. But I think a lot of the businesses are looking for um, for specifics, uh, which we don't have a lot yet. Um, and so that's, that's basically what I'm hearing is from, they just want to know, they just want to know what they need to do when they're going to be able to open again. And, um, I think like it's, I appreciate that. I, I appreciate the governor trying to roll it out in phases and I understand why. Um, I also like, would caution the businesses to just look at what the state is doing because we haven't heard yet from the city what the additional requirements they may have. For example, like Somerville is such a dense city, um, the requirements should be different for a city that's as dense as Somerville compared to like a rural community in the Berkshires, for example. Um, there's different needs like Christina had mentioned earlier. So um, I would just like caution people to kind of keep an eye out on that because we should be getting more clarity from the city on um, the next few days, hopefully. Um, but yeah, I think like knowing in terms of the capacity limits, like having actual numbers tied to that would be helpful. Um, and also in terms of, of time, time frame, um, I know there's like different phases, but it's unclear about like when those phases will kind of happen. I know they mentioned vaguely that some restaurant in dining or like, in like some business reopenings will happen in the next couple of weeks or so. Um, so it'd be good for the businesses to be able to prepare to know what those uh, guidelines and restrictions are. Yeah. 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 Just glancing at the, at the mayor's um, uh, or at the city website uh, and just seeing where some of those differences lie that uh, uh, hair salons aren't going to be able to open up in, in Somerville just yet, as well as places of worship. Um, and he's pushing out uh, curbside delivery for, for retail um, without, without, necessarily putting dates out and I you know yeah there is there is a need to be cautious around all this obviously um and so uh you know what you're you're hearing different uh different takes on it um and you know we'll we'll, we'll look to see what the what the city puts out in the next few weeks yeah I think like part of the trickiness is just like hearing different things from the state and the city and the business is not sure who like where to go to find like what they need mm -hmm. um and so that's that's just, I mean, everyone's learning like a new process and um, I really appreciate like uh, Governor Baker and Mayor Curatone like kind of really providing as much information as they had as quickly as they have. Um, and obviously like we're all, we're all like just figuring this out. So um, kudos to them for doing all of that, what they have done so far. And um, are there any are there any sort of uh, programs that you have in the in the pipeline, Jen, that you may want to uh, introduce us to, or or do you want to um, highlight any sort of initiatives that businesses can take advantage of at this moment? Um, so there's a couple grant opportunities that are out there that are really there's um, a Verizon grant that is available. The deadline is on May 20th. Um, so I recommend people, businesses can apply to that. Um, and uh, there, in terms of like our programs and availability, uh, East Somerville Main Streets is looking to try to help connect businesses with um, protective equipment and gear that they may need, um, face shields, equipment, um, masks, gloves, uh, PPE, that type of um, products. So if there's businesses that are looking for being able to access that in order to reopen to contact us directly, because we're, we're looking to try to help businesses get reopened safely and in a way that will protect their employees as well as much as possible. So that's, that's a program that we're hoping to, to roll out soon. So they sh businesses should contact us if they're interested. Great. And Christina, do you have anything to add? Um, yeah, so we're continuing to do a bunch of virtual events. So we do have a, a event with a author, local author by the name of Sarah Prager. She writes um, 
Her new book is coming out next week. It's called Rainbow Revolutionaries. We're actually partnering with uh, Mass Equality to kickstart Pride Month. The masks, yes, <laughs> yes. Um, um, <laughs> I forgot that story. <laughs> that's okay. I will totally like shoot it back to you if you want. <laughs> um, and so we're um, we're selling tickets at five dollars. There's a trivia with a grand prize. So we're hoping folks in the Somerville community, families in the community that would be interested um, in hearing um, a local author and talk and kick off Pride Month with us. Um, every all the details are on our website, allshewrotebooks.com, and then we're continuing to host uh, book clubs and virtual reader circles where people can just come with whatever they're reading at the time to just talk about books, anything and anything about books. Um, so yeah, that's kind of what we're up to. And uh, in the interim, while trying to uh, just wait for that guidance, as Jen was saying, um, from the mayor as well as um, Governor Baker. And you're still doing mail orders? Oh, yes. Yes. So we are still shipping across the U.S. Uh, through U.S. Postal Service. Definitely have to support our U.S. Postal Service um, consistently. Uh, we are also offering, again, uh, contactless pickup at the East Somerville Main Streets Pickup Market. Um, I'm hoping as we get more guidance from the mayor that we can maybe resume free porch delivery to residents in Somerville. This was something that we were doing prior to non-essential businesses being shut down and kind of ceasing contactless delivery at that time. So we did stop that. So I'm hoping to actually bring that back. I something I actually enjoy doing because it's my way of getting exercise. But at the same time, um, you know, just getting books uh, faster to folks, especially if uh, the surrounding communities. So more to come on that piece, but we, yes, we're still shipping out books. We're still re, um, receiving books on a daily basis. We're restocking consistently and you can find everything on our website. Great. And where's your inventory space right now? <laughs> um, my inventory space is um, back this hallway over here. There's a second bedroom that's only 120 square feet. There are approximately 157 books currently in that room. That is where shipping and receiving happens and all the magic of all she wrote books actually happens for all our customers. Right. Yeah. Let's, yeah. let's reduce <laughs> Christina's inventory, everybody. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, and Jen, you had something on your mask there. What, what, uh, what did it say? This is, we're also selling East Somerville branded masks. So you can get them. They're $8. They come in white and gray. Um, you know, support your local community organization and uh, pride in East Somerville. Nice. <laughs> so you can order them for pickup also at the pickup market. At the market on Sundays. Yes. All right. Yeah, this this was um, great to hear from business perspectives. Um, you know, us at um, Somerville Media Center, we, we think it's really important right now to, to get these stories out there. Um, during this business interruption, and now as we see that the interruption is is slowly going to be eased up on, you know, we we still need to hear and uh, hear from our businesses and support them throughout this whole process. So, thank you very much, Jen Atwood, Executive Director of East Somerville Main Streets, and thank you, Christina Chiampa, who is the founder and owner of All She Wrote Books. Thank you. Thank you, Dave. Appreciate thank it. you, Somerville Media Center. Yes, thank you so much. And uh, have a great Memorial Day, everybody. Thank you.